Good afternoon, Senator Bonoff and members of the Higher Education Workforce Development Committee. My name is Linda Hansen, and I have the pleasure and the privilege of serving as president of Hamlin University. And I want to thank you for this opportunity to be here with you today. Hamlin is a, a private, nonprofit university with roughly 4,500 undergraduate students um, and graduate students and law students. And we are located at Long Snelling Avenue in St. Paul. Hamlin University is Minnesota's first university. Some people don't know that. It was founded when Minnesota was a territory uh, in 1854 uh, and is among the first co-educational institutions in the entire nation. You know, it's at this time of year uh, when spring seems far away, but yet actually it's not in terms of a college education, that we begin thinking about the student celebrations and the faculty achievements that have been, uh, have been made. And I find myself often reflecting upon the university and how we've evolved over the last year, both to meet the changing needs of, of students today and also the growing needs of the communities that our students will be serving in. And I want to tell you a story this afternoon. We've had a lot of facts and figures and probably death by PowerPoint at this point. <laughs> um, but I want to tell you a story about our, our commencement last year. We had a young man named Kevin Yang. He was a political science and urban studies major. And in all of my years as an educator, I can say without reservation that this commencement speech was the most impressive story of the impact of a college education on a student's life that I have ever heard. This first generation student, uh, and also a talented slam poet, brought tears to the eyes of his fellow graduates and to the entire audience during his commencement speech. He spoke about his parents' struggles over the years of living in refugee camps to come to the United States from Thailand and to provide a better life for their children. And how Hamlin became a place, a place where he found a home and he found a community, a place where he was able to explore and to solidify his future. Kevin symbolized for all of his fellow uh, students in that audience that day the journey that he and they had made together, the journey that they had made to navigate between space and place and to figure out what truly matters in life. Kevin today is now fulfilling his dream, and he is um, matching that <laughs> academic achievement and his poetic synergy as an AmeriCorps Promise Fellow, and he's working in the youth development area at Intermedia Arts here in St. Paul. This year, 34% of our undergraduate students at Hamlin are like Kevin. They are first generation students. And I'm confident that there are many more Kevins among this group. And as a first generation graduate myself, I can promise you that the scholarship that I received as an undergraduate has never been forgotten. And it has made all the difference in my own life to be able to attain my first academic degree. Kevin's story serves to explain the kind of teaching and learning that's really going on at Hamlin University and at other private liberal arts colleges here in Minnesota. We continuously aspire and work steadily toward becoming a welcoming, diverse, learning-centered community of educators and learners. Our university's values are rooted in a tradition of liberal education that is dynamic and actively inclusive, and what we say as locally engaged and globally connected. Today we often hear about plans and goals and commitments that institutions make. And as educators, we are increasingly drawn to the outcomes and to measurements by which we know that we're having an impact. At Hamlin, we have adopted a vision that is grounded in something we call experiential learning as a diverse and learning-centered university. Now, I certainly believe that all Minnesota colleges and universities are committed to becoming and being accessible and to providing achievable options for students, for students who are willing to put in the time and the energy to seek a college degree. And while all 17 MPCC institutions are uniquely different, we all share common goals of providing learning outcomes that are measurable, sustained, and transferable to a career or to graduate school after commencement. 
At Hamlin specifically, we approach academic rigor as a shared responsibility from us as educators, along with parents and family, and certainly our students. I know that at Hamlin, our student body is shifting and growing with more non-traditional age students. You've heard about that already today. And more students who are coming in with significantly higher financial need. And we're working certainly to meet those needs. One recent metric is that our percentages at Hamlin, students receiving Minnesota State grants last year was at 40%, and this year that has increased to 48%. We've developed and strengthened our programs, of course, to help all of these students. We have a first-year seminar program that's focused on helping undergraduates adapt to college. It's a big shift to college. They need to learn how to study. They need to learn how to navigate systems. In short, we get them off to the right foot so they can succeed in college. We provide a writing center and a quantitative reasoning center to assist students who need help in writing and math skills. They can work one-on-one -on -one with mentors and instructors. And throughout their entire time with us, we help them transition from the world of college to the world of work to thinking about what are they going to do with that college education after they graduate. We're certainly proud of our identity as a school where students from a continuum of academic ability, demographic diversity, and high school GPA and rankings come, and they choose Hamlin as a first choice. 29% of our first year students and 31% of our transfer students are students of color. We don't necessarily have to talk about the stats. I invite you to come and walk across campus. You can see it. You can see it everywhere you go. Our six-year graduation rate is 65%, and we retain 85% of our undergraduate students from first to second year. Our, our approach embodies the highest standards that we know that the public, that you as lawmakers, and that as citizens expect from institutions where students receive state grant funds attend. Through their collaboration as educators, our collaboration as educators in offering them support, and the students' cooperation in pushing themselves to take college seriously, all of this together makes college not only possible, but achievable and a wonderful experience for our students. I'd like to uh, say just a few words about outcomes of workforce impact. We recently surveyed our alumni, and based upon the class of 2013, we learned that 83% of the students responded to the survey in saying that they were employed either part-time or full-time after one year of graduation. And 97% reported they were very satisfied or satisfied with their job. What was really impressive was that additionally, about 25% of these students said they also planned to go to graduate school, which is very, very encouraging. We've heard a lot about cost and debt, and how do we keep all of that in some kind of a balance for our students? We all agree that student debt loads can oftentimes become crippling for some students, and none of us wants to create any further barriers to them uh, being able to achieve a college education. And certainly not to overstate the obvious, but we certainly stand at a pivotal time. We cannot fail to continue providing education to all of those who will be the stewards of our nation's future health and well-being, especially at a time when demographically Minnesota's share of students who will be more high need financially than ever before and at a time when the workforce is changing dra dramatically. Minnesota needs people who have the critical thinking, the managerial, the collaborative and entrepreneurial education that private colleges provide. And we must graduate students from every demographic sector in a proportion that keeps up with the retirement of large numbers of people who have held leadership positions in our companies and our nonprofit organizations and institutions. I want to thank you for your support, for your investment in the state grant program, and your continued support. This, this state grant last year helped 838 of our undergraduate students attend college with an average award of 440 students, $440, uh, $4,440. $4, <laughs> 
Thank I'll you. get it out. <laughs> it's, it's almost 4 o'clock. <laughs> uh, I do want to say that we're doing our part as well. Last year, Hamlin University invested $32.9 million in gift aid for scholarships for our students. And this means certainly that we are being nimble, we're being flexible, effective, we're cutting costs, we're doing everything that we can to hold up our end of the affordability contract with our students. One of the things that we are doing that's very innovative, I just want to share with you, is that even sometimes the cost of textbooks becomes a tremendous barrier for students to be able to go to college. And we have done something very innovative with the cost of, of textbooks through rental options so that a student who's coming to Hamlin has their textbooks on day one and they have it for a cost of $390 per semester. Now, if you took chemistry or some of the other uh, uh, science courses, even one book can oftentimes approach that cost. We've been very, very excited about this program. It gives us another example of how we're trying to go at the cost of education. And so commencement is just around the corner. Uh, it'll be here before we know it. And as these graduates come together, they, as Kevin Yang, have bettered themselves through this hard work and critical thinking. And in turn, they will make their communities and workplaces better. And I think it is incumbent upon all of us in this room who are charged with being leaders in higher education and in our communities to do the same. And I close with Kevin's words. This is what he said at commencement. We're all here today because of someone. How beautiful is that? All of us from all different walks of life sharing the place here today. Even in moments where I felt most lost, my time here has taught me how important it is to create a place for others. So thank you today for helping us create that place for others. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Hanson. That was beautiful.